I get so much love from pretty fly bitches. The you know the bum bitches be hating. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> my hair looks crazy right now. Um, yeah, I'm taking it out. I'm about to switch it up, do something different to it. Um, I really sold this thing in and it looks crazy. It's like stuck literally, but we're about to go on this journey. Thank you for watching this video. Go on this journey with me. Um, right now, so it's 2024. I'm currently at my mom's house in Charlotte. Um, I was planning on staying here, but that's not going to work out because my mom is a narcissist. She's very abusive. Three days ago, she pulled my hair and punched me in my face, punched me on my head and pulled my hair. Um, and she told me that I have to leave today, which is Friday. So I'm just trying to like get myself ready for my plane to get back to LA. So just watch the process. Let's see. So I'm looking over here because I'm gonna look this way because my mirror. Oh, it's turning. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I should have put this on the. Um, I should have put this on the thing, but I didn't. On the tripod, I should have, but it's fine. Hmm, let me get something else more solid on the back of it, I guess. Um, maybe I'll use this instead. <laughs> something more better. So as y'all know, I've been homeless a few times in my life. Just living in LA, homelessness is so, like, to become homeless is so easy in LA because one, um, rent is super high. You don't get paid. You get paid a good amount, but not enough for you to pay rent. So, and for my case, because I'm a black woman, I'm a dark-skinned woman, there's a lot of racism at work. There's a lot of discrimination at work. There's a lot of, um, you know, microaggression at work. And I'm the type of person who, you know, I don't want to be abused when I go to work. Because I, I work very, very hard. I am my hard work. I should have put um, gloss on my, my lips. But anyway, I'm a very hard worker. I work very hard, okay? I work 40 hours, 80 hours, 50 hours a week it doesn't matter like i will work so that's not the issue it's just the people the racism in the work break in corporate america Whew, somebody needs to start talking about that because that's not talked about enough especially for black women especially dark-skinned black women okay and just women in general um so yeah and then somebody was supposed to help me get my so the main reason why i became home is because i was supposed to get my apartment and somebody was trying to help me get my apartment and i gave them three thousand dollars to like help me do everything help me find my apartment etc etc and they stole the money from me never gave it back and then the place where i was living at my landlord was um very abusive towards me turning off the water so i won't shower locking the bathroom door putting cameras by my room coming inside my room eating my food um raising the rent during covid just torment to me i had to call the police several times because i was being um traumatized and actually the reason and when that was happening during the pandemic you know you can't go anywhere you can't find a place you don't want you can't move anywhere because if you move somewhere you don't know if that person those people were exposed to covid it just was a bad, sticky situation. So my my landlord was really tormenting me. He tormented me until um, I just was fed up. I actually even, that's what I was going to say. I actually even got my dog Fendi because I was having so much anxiety, so much emotional trauma living there. So she's actually like an emotional support dog. Like that's where initially I needed her for 
you know, that love and support because I was really going through a lot, especially during COVID with my, um, with my landlord. And I have so many police reports and actually, and I even filed a restraining order against my landlord and everything. Um, so yeah. And one day I got so fed up cause it was just like, I couldn't even, it was so bad. I couldn't even order my own food. Um, he would like start with me and like yell in my face, a grown ass man yelling in my face when I do not yell. I did not yell at him. I was, I remained calm, never disrespecting. He would disrespect me, call me, um, call me like scum on the ground, call me whores. I'm like, how you, you calling me whores? You don't even know my sexual, you, you don't even know me. You don't even know me like that. You don't, you never see no guys coming in and out the house, like, it's just crazy, but anyway, it was just very, he just, it was very, very traumatic for me, but by the grace of God, I have survived it with that traumatizing. I definitely do have PTSD, PTSD from a lot of shit, but, um, or should I say a lot of stuff? I shouldn't curse on YouTube, but, um, let me finish this while I'm talking. So I decided to get the heck out that house before he drive me crazy, before he hurt me, because he threatened my life so many times. Um, so I escaped the house. I ended up, um, because it was COVID and everything, and pre-COVID, I mean post-COVID and pre-COVID, I decided to... Um, I decided to get a car with Lyft. I decided to get a car with Lyft and start doing Lyft, driving Lyft. Just so I can, like, have some money. I was like, since I can't find a place to live, I don't have money. Let me start Let me start from somewhere. So, I got to uh, start driving Lyft, sleeping in my car with my dog, driving Lyft, making some money, trying to save up money. But then I didn't know that all the money that you make and lift you have to give it back because you, you're paying off the rental the weekly rental so you'll only have like 300 dollars, and i still have to pay for gas so it was just like really like just to keep me afloat keep me okay it's so like and then i still had to pay for food etc etc um so that was cool you know that was that was doing yeah so i had to get food and everything and it just never, I was never able to really sustain, you know, saving money because it was like, I wasn't even making that. I was giving most of my money to back to the rental. Um, so that lasted for like, that lasted for a year and a half. Like that lasted for like two years. Me just sleeping in my car. Um, literally then I lost, but oh. I lost my car from Lyft because this guy, he um hit me, and Lyft don't really like when you get in accidents or stuff like that. So even though the car wasn't damaged, like it wasn't really complete, it wasn't damaged. Um, they still didn't like that, so they took the car from me. So then I couldn't even work no more. So then I would just only rely on like my business, my tarot business. So I would get like, I would get readings here and there, clients here and there. So me and Fendi would just stay at the park. But like, mind you, this is the middle of the summer in LA. It's like 100 degrees. So the morning times, I would do my tarot, upload on TikTok, um, and stay, stay there for about four hours until it started getting hot. Like stay there until like noon. And then go to the mall so I could get some air, charge my phone, um, and make sure, you know, make sure we stay cool, especially Fendi, you know, keep her cool because she's just a small chihuahua. So then we would do that. That was our daily, daily routine every day. Every day we would do that. And then, um, and then we... And then, like, where I would sleep, because I don't have a car to sleep in anymore, I would sleep behind this building, or by the, in front of this building, actually. And 
Then, like, during the day, I would hide my bags in the bushes so nobody will steal it. Because, like, my clothes, like, I would change I would change my clothes um, in the bathroom uh, at the park. Change my clothes. Um, I would... Because I always, I still wanted to, like, be... I mean, I couldn't wash up, but I was still, like, I didn't want to wear the same thing every day. So, I would change the clo my clothes. Um, mind you, lost all of my stuff so many times. Like, my clothes, my everything. So, I, um... Ouch. So, I was sleeping on the ground in the cold LA if everyone if you ever lived in LA you know that LA gets super and crazy cold at night I don't need, only have one little blanket um one little uh just put my head on my bag and make sure Fendi was under the blanket as well we would just sleep we would sleep um outside and the birds chirping will wake us up in the morning that's the only good that's the good thing about sleeping outside is waking up with the you know when the sunrise and like hearing the birds and and being in nature like that's the beautiful thing about it um so that was our routine every day and then i felt this app this ride share app that was able to get me to um get a rent another rental so i was like oh yes i felt another app i found something where i could rent a car and i could work so Lyft didn't let me do uh, Lyft anymore. So then I started doing Uber Eats. So I, so I got the you hear Fendi. <laughs> um, I got Uber. I started doing Uber Eats, and um, I was doing that. So we were sleeping in the car, doing Uber Eats. Still, again, all the money. All the money that I would that I would get for um for Uber Eats would go to the towards the rental. So it was just like a never ending thing, a never ending game, never ending game. That whole time just sleeping in my car. Thank God, not sleeping on the ground, but sleeping in my car, and that lasted for like from twenty from twenty twenty one. And so now, like to now, I'm still homeless. Twenty twenty one to twenty. 20, well, I'm at my mom's house right now, but technically I'm still homeless because today she's kicking me out. Um, after she put her hands on me, you know, I have a narcissist mom. So if anyone has ever dealt with a narcissistic type of mother, you you know how I feel. Um, she never takes accountability for anything. She, even though she hit me, she lies and says she didn't hit me. Um, she uh, comes to comes in my room tell me I come in the room that I'm in comes upstairs and tell me I can't lock the door I can't have my privacy just starting with me Nick picking with me um nothing she's never wrong about anything I'm always wrong she never take accountability for anything that she does and when I was homeless she did not help me she didn't care she didn't come to visit me when I was homeless she didn't come to visit me when my um, my landlord was very abusive towards me verbally, emotionally, and mentally. He never physically hit me, but he was those things and financially abusive because he was taking my money and it was just like a lot going on. She never came to help me. She's never been a support system. And even during those times, she never offered for me to come to her house, to live with her, to get back on my feet or anything like that. And like three years later... I'm here now, it's 2023, 2021, 22, 20, yeah, three years later, I'm here, I finally, I, have, I came here January 10th, and it's February 9th, I haven't even been a month that she's kicking me out, for no reason, literally never hit her, never did nothing, the only thing I have done was speak my mind and tell my truth and say how I feel, and if you know if you know a lot of narcissistic people or just people also that's um, not a millennial, not, you know, that's older, they think speaking your mind, telling your truth, speaking up for yourself is disrespect. So everything is disrespect to her. And she doesn't know how to talk. She doesn't know how to use her words. So she would rather just hit me, abuse me instead of having a conversation and being mature and logical in the situation. 
So, um, and then today, this morning at 7 a.m., she came and um, yelled at me while I'm sleeping. Yelled at me because yesterday I texted her and said, you're, you're telling me that I have to leave tomorrow but when you know I don't have any place to live. So, that is, so she came upstairs to tell me, I, if you, you're locking doors, that's disrespectful. Um, and so, yes, you have to leave. And originally why she hit me in my head, why she pulled my hair and things like that, um, is because I, we went to the grocery store and first of all, I bought like $180 worth of groceries twice. So that's like $400 worth of groceries in one month, right? So I bought groceries for us, no problem, bought her special things, things like that. And then I also bought like my beauty stuff, my makeup stuff, so I could get, so I could do content for my um, TikTok and things like that. Um, and I sent her because I don't have my physical debit card. I sent her the money so when we get to the store, she could pay for it. So I sent her um, seventy. I sent her seventy, sixty dollars. So, but I went over like it came up to seventy nine dollars. So I was like, when we get home, I'm gonna send you um, the money. So I realized that I only had $11 in my bank account. So I sent her $11, so I owe her $9. So I was like, actually, you know what? We're even. I was like, we're even. Um, I bought you some stuff from the grocery store. I get, we even, it's evened out kind of. Like, it's evened out. And she's like, no, it's not even out. You're taking my money over $9. Knowing that I don't have a job. Knowing that I'm homeless. Knowing that I don't have any money. I don't have any resources. I'm here for a reason because I'm homeless. So $9, really, after I just bought all that food for us, when I didn't have to buy so much food, I could have just bought only food for me. So she took all my beauty stuff. She tried to grab all my beauty stuff. Um, so she's like, oh, you're not giving me my $9? It's not that I'm not trying to give you my nine your $9. It's that I don't have any money, which I explained. I don't have any more. That's it. So she snatched her, she get my stuff. So I take my stuff out of her hand and then she just start going off, going off, pulling my hair, just going off on me. Like, and then that's when I just like, don't put your hands on me. I start yelling, like, how dare you put your hands on me? You should be able to talk to somebody, things like that. And then it's so crazy because before that, before this incident that recently happened like three days ago, she literally, um, we supposed to go again to Walmart um, to get me some stuff because I need to run some errands and things like that because we live in North Carolina. Right now we're in Charlotte. I can't go anywhere. I don't have a car. So I have to rely on her. So knowing that I've been waiting for her all day, um, she leaves me for no apparent, no reason. I was ready. Everything was ready. I was ready to go fixing my hair fixing i was fixing my eyebrows i had my clothes on all i had to do is put my shoes on i was ready to go and she just left me she didn't even wait five minutes she didn't even wait at all for me when i've been waiting for her for hours for to be ready hours for us to even say okay we're going because i've been asked her to go like at 7 a.m or the day before so it was just it's just really sad it's really um a sad thing because I haven't seen my mom in like five years never really spent that much time with her um the last time I came it was like two years ago but before that and it was drama once again when I came two years ago and I just quickly left um and and I was still homeless I was still homeless at that time and um I flew back to LA still homeless um, so, uh, and before that, I didn't come to, I didn't visit her in like five years because she constantly always abusing me, always neglecting me, always, um, tearing me down, um, never there for me, just, she's just always like attacking me mentally and fit, like mentally because not physically because we not, we were not around each other anymore, wasn't around each other, but mentally, emotionally, yes. Um, so just never, just, just never there for me. Like 
nothing is never enough me working like never just being there for me knowing never just wanting to help me out like i'm a hard working woman again i'm gonna iterate that i'm a hard working woman okay i will have five jobs if i have to it doesn't matter but i also know my worth i also know that i'm gonna work my value my value is important i'm not gonna work for pennies it's like this like the uber thing it's like i'm working but that's so i could stay up so i could still be okay but it's like working a regular job a corporate job and i'm not making enough money i'm not even making money for my rent that's crazy but i still did those jobs nonetheless i just had to have multiple jobs so and then like i never asked for hand i was never nobody has never paid my rent a day in my life I have always paid my rent for the 10 years I've been in LA. I've always paid my rent. I've always had money. I always had jobs. I always, I graduated college, had my bachelor's degree in film and production. I'm a screenwriter and director, um, mostly screenwriter. I love writing. I love producing. I love directing too, but I'm, my first thing I would say is I'm a writer. And everyone knows how difficult and how, you know, it takes a long time to get into Hollywood. And um, I, so anyway, so fast, for, uh, I almost lost my, I lost my train of thought. Fast forward, I should have recorded this in landscape, but whatever, it's fine. It's totally okay. Uh, maybe I'll put this on TikTok, should I? Maybe I'll put this on TikTok um maybe i will um put this on youtube we'll see we'll see which one i'm gonna do but um so let me see Whew. that was crazy <laughs> if you know you know black girls know the struggle of taking out a sewing and i really sold this this thing and i don't want to curse but, um, and the thing is, I put, like, one of those little caps on to keep it, to really make sure it's sewn in, because I did some real messed up shitty braids <laughs> under it, because I was rushing. This is what you get for rushing. That's what, this is what I get for rushing. So, now I'm here, and now all this drama, all this drama has happened still homeless oh and then okay you're probably wondering okay what happened after the um higher car situation i mean the the yeah the cars oh, this is second rental so i um so i was working during uber eats that was only paying for my rental paying for food and gas that's it i couldn't save up to get an apartment or a room or room to rent or anything it, it was not it just wasn't working out so um, so I applied for a job at Enterprise. It was work. I was so, I was, I was so excited, so happy, worked my ass off. And, but then I just, but then I started, um, I started dealing with discrimination and racism at Enterprise. Enterprise rental car. And I love that job. I love sales. I love talking to people. I love working hard. I'm always about to hustle and bustle. Okay. I'm a Capricorn moon. So if you know about capricorns you know that capricorns get to the bag okay i'm an aries too aries sun and i'm a sagittarius rising so if you astrology girls you feel me you feel me okay and i'm a tarot reader so go to my page day paris on my other tiktok and book a reader so i can get this coin so i can get out of home so i can give me an apartment give me somewhere to live okay because this shit is crazy Okay, anyway, so I, um, so what I was about to say, um, what else? After that, um, oh my gosh, hold on. So I worked at Enterprise, was dealing with, was dealing with, um, dealing with racism and discrimination because I'm a, I was the only every job that I had I'm always the only black woman corporate America I'm always the only black woman um was the only black woman there was the only woman there is that's always my the case with me you know 
and I feel well. I'm good with that. That's cool. Like I'm, I'm real savvy with it. I don't care. Like I'm me. I'm it. I'm that girl. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get you what you want. Get you what you need. Period. I'm gonna even put a smile on your face. Period. So I um. So I was doing really good at the job and my boss, so my manager was getting jealous because I was so quick on my feet. I got everything good. Like and they was holding me back and I would tell HR they're going to do nothing for me. They're going to change. They wouldn't like sit us down and talk like my, my manager yelled at me in front of the customers, made me cry. Like it was just so bad on top of me getting abused at Enterprise and me like getting being um mentally abused and me being um discriminated against i was homeless at the same time so i was going through that at work and also homeless sleeping in my car <sighs> tell me about overwhelming so i pushed through pushed through pushed through and I just couldn't do it no more. I couldn't be homeless no more. They didn't even like give me enough money. To, I didn't even make enough money to even get an apartment. It's just, oh my God. So I pushed through and pushed through no matter what, still dealing with the racism. And so one day I just couldn't do, I couldn't, you know, it's just so much that somebody can take, you know, it's so much. And then it's like me being homeless, I lost the car. When I lost the car that I was renting out, that was, it was just like, now I gotta sleep on the street. Now I have to sleep on the street. And like, how am I gonna sleep on the street again? It's like, dang, so now I gotta go back to that building again to sleep at? So now I gotta go back on the street and work for Enterprise and work at this job? And then I told them that I was homeless and they didn't even help. They didn't even give me no resources. They did not help. They did not give zero fucks about me, okay? Um, in their eyes, they just they just didn't care. That's all I can say. That's, they just did not care. So I had to take a leave of absence. And now I'm in Charlotte trying to build my life up again. Start Have to start all over. And I lost all my stuff. All my stuff that I had, all my stuff. Everything that I owned, I lost. I couldn't pay for my storage. My storage was gone. Um, everything, my clothes. I have no clothes. This, this, this stuff. These, these. This is from Walmart. Okay, three dollars. Um. So, but you know, I'm. You know, I got my nails done because you know sometimes you gotta do stuff for yourself. Like you gotta, you gotta like, still feel good through all this bullshit, all this BS, you still got to make yourself feel good, look good mentally, you know, be grateful regardless of what's going on around you. So I'm going to look good, period. You wouldn't know that I was struggling. You wouldn't know that I was homeless if you saw me on the street because I'm presenting myself well. When I, even when I was homeless, people, like, they would not know because I look good. I look good, okay? So... Being homeless is not no, it's not a face to homelessness, okay? It's not, this could, you don't have to be uh, on drugs. I'm not a drug and I don't do drugs. I don't even smoke or drink, like, I don't even smoke or drink, okay? And if I do, like, if my friends or somebody asked me to go out, I probably would drink one, a glass of wine, okay? If I'm feeling real good or whatever, I might take one shot. A tequila or something like that but like i'm not a drinker like i'm not like a drink i'm not a drinker for for i i may socially drink and i don't even socialize i'm an introvert i stay to myself i don't even i deal with myself because i know there's a lot of snakes in the grass out here okay <laughs> especially being in la i've learned you, you can't be in the mix around a lot of people especially me i'm an empath i'm very spiritual I protect my peace. I protect my energy. If you know, you know. So, anyway. So, now I'm sitting here talking to y'all. Preparing myself to leave this house. Trying to do my hair. Get my hair fixed. So I'm going to do my hair over, actually. Using this same hair. 
and fix it right here. I'm gonna clean up all everything, clean the room that I was in, clean the bathroom that I was in, just clean everything up, fix everything, pack all my clothes, um, and just prepare for the day. And then, yeah, I wanted to record y'all. I wanted to record. I wanted to record the whole thing when I get every, all of it out, but I guess I'll come back to y'all to show y'all, um, to show y'all when I finish doing my hair, when I finish doing it all over, I'll come back. Okay. See y'all soon. So yeah, this is the hair. I fixed it, did something different to it. Um, but yeah, gotta do my edges and stuff like that. But yeah, I fixed it, but this, I would say all this to say is to never give up. Always stay strong. Don't let anybody tear you down. No matter what happens to you in your life, there's always light under the, after the darkness. There's always light after the darkness. Stay strong. Believe in yourself. And move with grace. Move with grace. Never with anger. Move in peace. Love and peace. Is light, love, and peace always. And you know, I never, I'm not a 304, I mean, a 305. Um, I never sell my cat. I always, I, I'm always a hardworking woman doing regular jobs. I never did the fast money thing. And you know, us normal girls, you know, some we gotta speak up, you know, we really been just. And shout out to the girls who, you know, have the balls to do it. Because it is hard out here. It's crazy out here. If you don't, you know, if you're an independent woman and you don't just, you have self-respect and value for your body and for your, you know, who you are. So things get tough out here. But at the end of the day, it's good. And when you get into these dark situations, you learn who loves you, who's for you, who is really down for you. You learn, you learn what life is really about. It just strengthens you. So none of this stuff is to say for me to get a pity party. It is what it is. I'm just speaking my truth. I'm just speaking, telling my story. So you know that you're not alone and you will get through it.